Shannon has immersed herself into. Facebook ad accounts and other thrilling topics. We're live. Welcome, everyone, to Fun Friday, July 15th, 2022. John Lavinia here. And today, being Friday, we've got to start with a joke. Although I am wearing my... I, I didn't have time to, to like pick out my wardrobe for today. So the standard black polo shirt will have to do. Um, but here I got a joke actually from my chiropractor from back in Phoenix. So Shannon and I would go to, uh, to this chiropractic uh, doctor and um, I had been once or twice. Uh, it wasn't, uh, I probably should have gone more frequently. I could probably use a chiropractic appointment right now, in fact, but anyway, uh, they sent out a, a joke because they're also into like, you know, body, mind, spirit, right? The whole, you know, holistic uh, sort of approach. So you guys want to hear the joke that my chiropractor sent? Yeah, you do. Of course you do. (sighs) Once upon a time, that means it's going to be a long joke. (laughs) There was an order of priests who amongst other sacrifices were sworn to a life of celibacy. This particular order followed the teachings of a wise old priest who every year would enter the catacombs where the Holy Scriptures were kept and not returned for several weeks until he had read each and every page. For the rest of the year, the wise old priest would teach the Scriptures to the other priests and assure them that they were truly on the path of righteousness and that their sacrifices, including celibacy, were truly virtuous. This went on for many years until one year the wise old priest passed away. In his place, a new priest was elected, and he descended into the catacombs to read the Holy Scriptures. After a few days, he returned to the order, mumbling to himself, and appeared quite bewildered. Brother, what's wrong? You look as if you've seen a ghost, asked the other priests. Celebrate. The word is celebrate. Celebrate. So much for listening to others and not finding out for yourself. So, uh, so the topic for today, based on that joke, is, um, is finding and discovering your truth. So I think uh, it's a fun, fun story. Okay. And, and I get it. Celebrate. Celebrate. Okay. Um, and this is why a lot of times you guys know I'm a stickler for words. I'm like, no, you know, look it up. Look up every freaking definition of that word, right? I got to know exactly what that author is attempting to communicate to me. <clears throat> so, um, because look, as I've gone through, and as we've gone through, right, books, and we've been, you know, uh, in, in studying, uh, you know, various schools of thought, philosophy, and how we a- apply these things into our life, assuming that's our intent, right, to actually use this stuff. Uh, I can tell you in the last 35 years, having read all that I have, I've had to, uh, you know, I've had to discriminate between, you know, the wheat and the chaff, so to speak. Uh, And the barometer is, does it work in my life? Is that, is that workable? Does it bear fruit? Uh, Because I'll I'll tell you that, uh, especially in modern times, now a lot of the stuff that we read is, is, you know, older Right. Like if we read a book that was written in the last 50 years, that's like modern. That's like way, way modern. Right. So some of the stuff we read is, is older, um, most of it. But there is a uh, there was a shift um, with the the democratization of the, um, let's say, the publishing world. Right. And publishing simply means to make public. Right. So that could be through electronics, social media. Uh, a book, right? I'm a self-published author. I didn't have to go get a book deal, right? So I seized upon that opportunity to produce something, to publish something uh, with or without the agreement of, you know, some authority who could tell me no. Just like you guys remember, we read Andy Andrews, The Traveler's Gift, right? Nobody wanted to publish it. I thought it was awesome. So did lots of other people apparently, right? So, so, so much for what the authorities say. <clears throat> but in, in my studies, in my uh, having read lots of books and attended lots of courses and lectures and whatever, um, I, I've noticed that uh, this is going to sound critical. The, the, the dumbing down uh, is real. And the, uh, with the democratization of 
publishing comes a lot of false prophets, uh, a lot of experts who aren't. In fact, right now, my wife, Shannon, is, is dealing with our, our um, Facebook ads managers. Uh, that's what they do, like for real. Like that's their profession and they cost money, right? And it's money well spent because figuring out yourself and with the constant changing algorithms and all this kind of stuff, <clears throat> that, is a, um, that is something that some people would do, let's say, to take a course on, you know, the cracking the code of Facebook secrets or something which there's a million courses titled almost exactly that. And you can, um, you can get somebody else's truth, which may or may not be relevant now. It may, have, may or may not have even, you know, bared fruit for them. But if we have something we can track, we can say, well, you know, this, I, I can see it, the, the demonstration of it working in my life. Well, now that's something that we can take and we can own for ourselves. Okay, now in the case of something like, you know, a constantly changing you know, ads marketplace, uh, that's something where we seek, you know, expert help and they are, you know, just like a, a, you know, a surgeon would be, you know, really into their craft and, and, uh, you know, always, always on the cutting edge, pun intended, I suppose. Uh, same thing here with, you know, people who, who specialize in that and only that. But when it comes to life and living this and, you know, what I'm doing and what we're all doing here, in our various roles, which we've talked about, we have multiple roles here. We've got, you know, parent, uh, you know, uh, business person, uh, individual with a body, right? Exercise, right? So there's different things that we can do, different roles and different goals. Uh, with that broader, with that broader sense of of living, uh, what I like to do, and and after much frustration, what I decided to do. Uh, after, you know, reading a bunch of garbage was to see how does this work when I actually apply it into my life. Now we're going back some years, obviously, some decades, in fact. <clears throat> but I, I found that um, if I just if I just go into agreement with your truth, and I'm, let me put air quotes around truth, okay, because I, I think truth is, and then reality is based on my thoughts about the truth. The truth came first and then came my interpretation and my, my thoughts about it. But what's workable in my life is that which I can apply and successfully, you know, get a result. So that's what I'm most interested in, right? Not uh, intellectualizing, although, you know, I, I could very, very easily own that I'm on the intellectual path. I mean, just digging into, you know, the etymology of words and, and the, uh, you know, the, um, the whole well, the intellectual path, right? Reading lots of books, trying to figure out why stuff works, right? So that I can know for myself. Uh, it's not an easy path. I suppose, you know, a, a different, arguably simpler path would be just being devotional or something. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm not that. Um, I believe that the whole point of personal development the end result of that is not that you're a devotee or you know a disciple per se, right? But but that you've got workability and that you've got tools that you can then go and cause, in other words, be effective in your life. And so when seeking the truth or or my truth, I, I seek workability. And and that's it. This is this is like the scientific method, right? So, and we've all done this in certain areas of our life uh, to whatever degree. OK, there are things where I've heard some people recently talking about being frustrated with this or that method. OK, uh, whatever methods they're applying to, to business or to uh, diet and fitness and whatever. I mean, there's an interesting example. How many different diets are there? Now, I don't know. I see Mandy here. I don't know if, if in England you've got 10 million gossip rags. Uh, at the at the checkout at the supermarket for the different you know the diet of the stars and you know instantly get slim with the new secret thing right and so <laughs> with the airbrushed you know cover model and and so if it was as simple as you know eat your vegetables lean proteins and you know get some exercise if it was that simple then they wouldn't have all those magazines right. No, not right. Not right. Because although simplicity, you know, I think is the height of mastery, uh, we got to sell magazines. Just like in the self-help section, 
in the in the uh, in the entrepreneurship section, in the philosophy section of the bookstore, we got to sell books. If it was as simple as go ahead and uh, uh, Missy, one of Missy's favorite authors, Neville, right? Go ahead and read that Neville book, um, Awaken the Imagination. Go read that book. Do that. That's it. You don't need any other books. Or one of my favorite authors, uh, Napoleon Hill, right? Go read Think and Grow Rich. That's it. One book. Get rid of the freaking bookshelves. Get them out of here. You got one book. In fact, you don't even need a bookshelf because it's on Kindle, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's it. And just do that. If it was that simple, what would we need all these other books? It is that simple. If we've got, uh, think of it like this. If we've got an instruction manual for a, uh, a, a coffee pot, all right? So here is the device and its, um, it, its purpose is to heat the water and to run it through whatever you've put in there that it's filtering through the coffee grinds in this case, and to put it into a receptacle, a carafe of some sort. And, uh, and then that's the product, right? Is the, is the you know, the, the hot beverage, okay? And with the coffee pot comes the user manual. And you read it. Some people do. I do, front to back. And now you know how to get all the benefits via the operation of this device. And it it really is that simple. There's no second book to read uh, unless you're the repairman. Then there's the service manual, which is five times thicker, okay, with every screw, every diagnostic procedure, okay. Coffee pots, pretty much, not so much. I mean, if the coils burned out, you throw the thing in the garbage, right? But, um, but with something as simple as that, you as the as the operator of your life as a coffee pot, uh, that's it. There's no, you know, philosophy about it or Q and A or whatever. It's just this is how it works. When you press the go button, it goes. Obviously. <laughs> And I'm not going to surprise you with this, but obviously we've all got a few more moving parts than the coffee pot. But I still believe that if we truly had impeccable integrity to the ideas in that one book, pick one, okay, that it would bear fruit, assuming it was written by somebody who had fruit on the tree. But the only way we would know is if we applied it. The only way we would know is if we we took the the teachings and we saw how does this work in my life. Now, there was um, a book, which I won't even mention the name. There was a book that I read uh, right before I wrote Integrity is Everything. It kind of prompted me to get off my ass and finally write something. And, and because the book was trash, it was trash. Oh my goodness. And it was promoted on Oprah and everything. Oh my goodness. We're so enlightened. No, you're freaking not. No, you're not. Right. It's going to be the same, the same. Oh, yeah, we got lofty for a minute and now you're back onto the same stuff. And, and we see this again and again and again. And how do I know? Because you point one finger, three point back. I've seen it in myself where I've I've gotten intellectually. I've gotten the message, uh, but I either didn't put it to work in my life or if I attempted to, it didn't work in my life. So. So in that case. What we've got to do is we've got, we've got to become a fruit inspector, as the old saying goes, by the fruits, you'll know them. Not only the source that we're getting our information from, but also inspecting our own fruits. So if somebody's frustrated, let's say that, that you're, um, that you're uh, not getting the result that you want in a certain aspect of, of your doing this here. Uh, okay, great. So, so either you're not applying the method as written, there were some words you misunderstood, some instructions. You maybe didn't even read the instructions. I don't know. Why can't this freaking coffee pot to work? Did you read the manual? Back, <laughs> back when I was doing technical work, um, one of the, one of the um, diagnoses was RTFM. You guys can figure out what that means. Customers complaining about a, a fault, right? The problem is RTFM. Um, <laughs> So that could be it. That could be it. Or, or any of you guys gotten um, something off of uh, Amazon? I know Jeff Bezos is the number one salesman for the Chinese Communist Party, and you get the, you know, you get the item in, and the and the instructions are written in in Chinglish, Ch- Chinglish, right? And so, <laughs> right. And so, I, 
right? So that's how, how do you work with that? Um, interestingly, I've got a, uh, a radio. Some of you know I'm a ham radio uh, licensed operator. And uh, a lot of this stuff is, is made in, in China. Uh, the better stuff is made in Japan. But the, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of Chinese radios out there. Um, and, the, and the importers uh, do sometimes, sometimes they do the translation. So let's write the manual in English as people who speak English for selling to people who are fluent in English, right? And so they figure all this out and they rewrite the manual. We're not giving you the Chinglish manual. Here's the real manual. Sometimes that happens, okay? But if, if that's the case where you've, got, where you've got something almost undecipherable or out of context or with, you guys have seen it, one little word that's off. It's like, what, what, what do you mean? I don't understand. What button are they talking about? You've seen this before right? Then you're going to have problems applying the information. Alternatively, so that's one, one reason why you could be frustrated. And it's terribly frustrating, right? You're attempting to apply unworkable information. This is crap. Throw this manual, throw this book in the garbage, okay? Now, the other opportunity would be uh, we're just not doing it. We might be telling ourselves that we really, you know, we're trying to succeed, we're trying. Yeah. And you know what? I'm, I'm real busy. Yeah, I'm busy. But, you know, fake it till you make it and whatever. And, you know, part time sometime. If we're expecting to get spectacular results, and it's my intention to make a spectacle of myself, and it's my intention for you to do the same in a good way. Um, then I don't believe that we can, we can remain the, the dilettante, right? The weekender, the hobbyist. Again, this is, this is what's true for me, all right? If you can go get spectacular results as a, a part-timer, some-timer, uh, whatever, uh, good for you, okay? Me personally, I've not been able to. Here, give you one example. I was talking to a client, one of our uh, accelerated member clients, and um, and we had a little one-on-one -on -one session and uh, we were talking about uh, time and really activity management because time management, you don't manage time, you manage activities. And so we were talking about that and the whole topic of um, multitasking came up. So there's a word, multitasking. Okay, so does that, does that bear fruit in my life? Uh, for me, no, no, it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, if I was, if I was texting right now, while telling you guys about what we're talking about here, hold on just a second. No, no, wrong answer. Wrong answer. I can't be in present time and, you know, and channeling or whatever comes out of my mouth. Uh, I can't do that and multitask. Now I can shift my focus back and forth a lot. If it was, you know, here's an emergency or something, pause here, address that, come back to this, right? So unlike the computer chip in this thing that I'm talking to you via right now, which can multitask because it's got multiple electronic brains going on and it's right now it's checking the messages and it's doing the thing and it's, you know, running the camera, right? So I'm not wired like that. And so my truth is that you focus on one friggin' thing and you take it to the point of completion. My favorite four letter word done. Thank you, Missy, for my coffee cup. My wife was just drinking out of it yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> Missy made me a cup. Um, two cups, in fact. Yeah, very nice. She's a cup aficionado. So, so, um, so no, we, we take it to completion which is the anatomy of anything we've ever been successful at. We've taken it to a done, right? Anything undone, no, no success there, right? So, uh, and then I can move on to the next thing. Uh, and if it's something I cannot complete during this premeditated scheduled session, right? Then it will be, it will be a work in progress and then we must shift our focus to another thing. But the idea that I can multitask well, then I could do a whole lot of stuff kind of half-assed and ineffective. Now, I'm not saying that you got to seek perfection on everything, but 
Do you like to do quality work? Sure. Imperfect and done beats perfect and not done. Yes, because it'll never be exactly perfect, right? I heard that uh, there's no author who ever finished writing a book. There's always more. <laughs> okay, you just got to publish. <clears throat> but the but the idea, my truth, that I can multitask and be effective, uh, I've disabused myself of that. Now, I offered that to my client. And I instantly I saw the relief, like the the cognition, the um, oh my goodness, yeah, I've been I've been doing like twenty things at once. Like, All right, so we got to uh, get into like block scheduling and compartmentalization. We're going to schedule time here for events that have to happen at that time, and then we're going to prioritize the other things that are not time bound. And then you don't go on to number two until you've completed number one, and that's how you prioritize. And if you've got more than three priorities, then you've got none. So so let's go ahead and and pick the top things. And let's order them in importance. And you can have other things, uh, more numbers than three. Okay. But we're not putting attention on other things until we complete these things that are of higher priority. And so again, that was, that was uh, a truth that I offered to this person. And we're going to see, uh, I'm going to talk to her again in a, a few days. Uh, we're going to see if that, if that bears fruit, either she understood the instructions and applied them and, and it, and it did, it worked or she understood the instructions and didn't apply them and it didn't work, or she didn't understand the instructions, therefore she couldn't apply them. There's three choices there. I like the first one where we understand the instructions and we apply them to the point where it's true for us. It's no longer a theory. One of the things that, <clears throat> that holds us back and that can cause frustration, and this is true, you can see this also in um, academics. <clears throat> okay, so. So you've got um, you've got the textbook, and you're getting the theory, okay? But you've never laid hands on the machine. So so if you were um, an outer space person and you just showed up on planet Earth, and you'd never seen a phone before, and I told you about phones, they're this communication device, you see, and uh, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. And there's buttons, and you press the buttons, and if you press the correct buttons, you could talk to the person you're intending to talk to, and it works all very nice and great. So now you got the theory of phones. In theory, you've got it. And then I go ahead and I hold up this, and you're like, "Well, what the hell is that?" Well, it's a phone. We were just talking about it. You said there's buttons. Where's the buttons? Right? What do I do? Do I do I Put it here, or do I shove it up my butt? What do I do with this? Thing? <laughs> do I eat it? Right? But until you lay hands on machine, it's just a theory. It's not true yet. Right? Theoretically, it sounds good, but is it workable? I know, silly little example. I get it. But where else have we done that in our life? Where we've attempted to attempted to accomplish something great with, with a cursory understanding of theory alone. I say you got to get, get shoulders deep in that thing. I mean, really dig in to the point where you own it. What did uh, Gautama Buddha say? He, he said, uh, uh, don't, don't just believe, you know, uh, based on tradition, what the wise man told you, or because many others reported that it's the case or whatever. He said, but when something's, you know, uh, agrees with reason, and is you know workable well then now make it yours and he said that thousands of years ago before before any bozo could publish anything about anything on any platform so we've got a situation here don't we we've got to have what's called discriminating thought when i say discriminating i don't mean like a lot of people don't understand what that word means either that means the ability to to separate this from that right doesn't mean prejudice, right? That would be the opposite. So we need to we need to be able to to separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. And again, I say the barometer is: does it work in your life? And the only way to know that is through direct application. If you want, back to to the, um, the client I was talking to, uh, they had a uh, uh, some lessons they had to go through as directed by a, uh, a doctor. And, uh, and it was gonna be several days worth of 
them allocating time to these uh, training modules or, or whatever for some specific uh, medical situation. <clears throat> and so, and so I said, well, is the, is the outcome, and I don't know what the outcome is or what the condition is. Okay. But is the outcome important to you? Right. Cause I know I'm not going to do it if it's not important to me. If I don't, if I don't see, you know, if there's no carrot that, you know, I'm busy enough, right. I don't go read friggin' medical manuals. So, so, oh yeah, it's, it's very important to me. Okay. Okay. So then what, what should we do here? Since it's a priority, let's go ahead and schedule that time. We can, we can uh, block out. Here's an hour uh, each day, right? They estimated about five hours worth of work. They got two weeks to complete this. Well, great. If we do an hour each day, then in five days, you'll be done. You'll be done early. If you can't be on time, be, be early. Oh, that's amazing. But well, what hour? I was like, well, could you get up an hour early? I can. Well, holy shit. Uh, problem solved. Right? So sometimes, sometimes for people to get to their own truth, guidance, an objective, you know, third party view, right? I can't tell you how many times this has benefited me, right? Where I'm just in the thick of it. And, and, my um, the results that I could have are are being occluded, or the solutions to get those results are being occluded because of my own filters, because of my own beclouded truth, right? That I'm seeing things through. So sometimes it's good for someone to get counsel, right? Like Solomon did a lot from people who weren't occluded because they've already gone down that road. And they can accelerate your evolution for you, give you some guidance, right? Show you what not to put your attention on, right? Get back on focus. <clears throat> so in saying all of this, and I know it's fun Friday, so it's kind of a lighthearted topic. But, uh, but in saying all this, I, I guess here's, here's what I'm looking or, or hoping that you, you will do with this, is that you'll find some area of your life, and you probably don't need to look far, uh, where you've experienced lackluster, you know, frustration or confusion or um, non-optimal fruits, okay? And you can say, all right, do I understand the instructions? Do I understand what to do? Okay, and if the answer is yes, well, I guess if the answer is no, then go back to your, back to basics, right? Go get some more, get some more training on that. Find what part of that did you not understand? Why can't I turn this coffee uh, pot on? Well, you know what? The on button is there and I never understood the instructions that said that was the on button. Fantastic. Now you understand. Great. So, so clear up any, any misunderstandings. But if you don't have misunderstandings and you're certain of that, then um, with renewed, with new eyes, let's say, and renewed vim, vigor, vip, in other words that start with V, uh, execute. Right. With no prejudice. Well, you know, this is what happened last week. No, 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 no. reset button. OK, but just as the uh, as it's called childlike confidence. Right. With with purpose and faith. Execute. Right. With no story about it. No other evaluations, no Q&A, no debate. If you know what to do, do it without all of the other stuff on top of it. No cherry on top, okay? So just do it and, and suspend, for, if you will, suspend frustration. Suspend your judgment and story and, and uh, opinions about what should or shouldn't be and all the other stuff that causes us to suffer. Objectively, purposefully, in present time, do it. And watch what happens. Just hearing myself say this, it sounds terribly freeing, right? I, I think, uh, you know, <laughs> being free of the frustrations or the complications or the confusions uh, allows me not only to get better results, but, but to more accurately experience what's true. The coffee pot turns on when you press the correct button, and it's as simple as that. It's not frustrating at all. I know, simple example.
we can take that into different compartmentalized areas of our own lives. And we can have that sort of a turning the switch on kind of experience. But I think to do that, we, we've got to be able to turn the other switch off. The, the switch of all of our judgments, stories, frustrations, and all of the things that be cloud our interpretation of what is or what could be. Um, I guess I'll, I'll end with this because I, I know we've got we've got a few different you know types of businesses just with the people who are here with us live right now. Um, I go back to what here's the question: What would it look like if success was easy in your specific you know doing your your profession whatever you do, right? What would it look like? How would it occur to you if success came naturally? Like it appears to do for the other person you saw and you heard their testimonial and wow, that's amazing, right? Well, guess what? It's not so amazing. Okay. But for you, if you've got sound methods, you've been trained. Okay. Then what would, how would it occur to you if those kind of results came naturally to you? That's one way that we could balance or counter, if you will, Here's frustration. Well, here's what, what's the opposite of that, right? We get clarity through contrast. Well, here's, here's, you know, difficulty. Well, here's ease, right? Consider, just consider that. I mean, you have no problem considering what frustration feels like. Well, let's have some time to consider. I mean, it's my attention anyway. I get to spend it however I want. I'm going to put it on this. Ease, flow, effectiveness, right? And just kind of sit with those words and then execute. Might sound too simple, uh, but this would be the application of a lot of the stuff that we've read. Doing things in a certain way, right? Pruning shears of revision. Any of these phrases ring a bell? <laughs> the problem is my integrity, right? I, I uh, yeah, it sounds good intellectually. Now what? Now go do it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> integrity what do you guys think about this this just came up for me just as we were we were getting ready to go live here um got some thoughts on this i'd love to hear from you yes my friend missy welcome back wow john um can i just make a public apology to my husband who tried for about 20 years with the same phrase to say to me all the time, when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. But I was like the guy in Ed Sullivan with the plate, you know, mm -hmm. I can do it, I can do it. And I also agree with you that if you pick any one of those books, Napoleon Hill, Neville Goddard, Wallace Bottles, James Allen, you can fix everything. If you devote yourself to that, I mean, it took Napoleon Hill 20 years to write the book. So it's, you know, you have to, it's not an, an application. It is constant, continuous application of the methods and any of the methods work. But it is also good to expand your mind. And these men wrote in a very elevated way and to, to make your brain go bigger. My problem was I had a lot of knowledge. I said, well, in school, I'm smart, like Fredo, you know, smart. And um, I thought I knew. I thought I was aware. I was aware of everything going around on around me. And that I have learned from you and a bunch of dead guys caused me to, it almost blocked me knowing myself. So, um, or I let it block me becoming aware of what was inside. And now that I'm learning this and examining this from an objective viewpoint, because everything was subjective before that, now that I can be objective, I have become so happy for all the mistakes and, and, I, and I don't look back in judgment anymore because I, 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 I tend to be a perfectionist. That's why I had to spin every plate at every minute of every day. And it um, doesn't work, it doesn't work. Pick a plate, spin it, and then block time to go spin another plate. And all these methods, as I said, when you apply them, they will work. Pick one, pick several. You can combine several. They work beautifully together, you know. Um, 
And I just, if anybody is out there listening and you feel confused, it may be because you're not aware of your own responsibility in what has blocked you from getting your desires and reaching your goals and hitting your targets. You have to look in, you have to take responsibility and you have to apply the methods every day. Even on a day you're not working, you can apply those methods to whatever it is you're doing and have integrity doing it. And integrity really is everything because that's what keeps you doing it. And that's my contribution for the day. So thank you very much for this topic. I love it. Thank you, Missy. Wow. We missed you. So I'm glad you're, you're back. In fact, we got lots of members we've been missing lately. If you're seeing this on recording, we'd love to have you on a live session. So uh, come on down. Um, we got Catherine here, Daisy's here, Edward, Lynn, Mende. Always a pleasure to see you guys. Um, is there is there any other area um, or maybe something specific you want to bring up that, uh, you know, we could go ahead and... Uh, I'll tell you, it's it's um it's good for me to hold myself to account if there's uh you know some area that I've been avoiding or neglectful of. In fact, I've admitted it to you guys, and I'll and let me share a win. You know what? It's Friday. Let me share a win. Um, uh, I got a, a two new TikTok channels up. So uh, sell more with John just went live today. Posted the first video to it. So sell. TikTok.com uh, slash at sell more with John. And, um, and yeah, Shannon just uh, put up a new, a new one. Plus we got American family 1776. So we're like, uh, why is that a win? Why is that? It's a win because this is an area of ignorance. I, I did not know the ways of, of that social media platform. And uh, I am, I am more enlightened now than I was before having put my hands on the machine and done it. Okay. In fact, Shannon and I have our, our daily meeting, our daily business meeting, and we were posting uh, our first video to each of our channels today. So, so uh, that is, uh, we are less ignorant. Let, let's say that I want to be careful, right? I am not, I haven't arrived. Right? I think there's still lots more to learn, but, uh, but one video on one new channel is infinitely better than zero videos on zero channels. Infinitely better. We have overcome inertia. That's a win. That's a win. And like Missy was saying, um, as she was talking about all the subjectivity of it all, I had all these considerations about it. Like, well, you know, another new platform. Or it's just a bunch of teeny boppers on there. And everybody's got blue and pink hair. And they're just watching people dance and whatever. It's all bullshit. And, uh, and then I saw, you know, here's, here's some of the top, you know, salespeople in the world. Here's coaches. Here's. I even saw uh, Gordon Ramsay on there, right? Doing food stuff. And I'm like, man, everybody's on this freaking thing. I'm late to the party. Enough with my story about it, right? If, if, uh, if you know, 10, 12 year old kids can, can do this, I, I, I got 147 IQ, right? And so uh, do it, do it, right? But to think I already knew, just like, like Missy was talking about, number one barrier to learning anything is to think you already know. You lose. OK, so they think I already know that, you know, this isn't going to be for me. You know, what the hell am I doing on TikTok? Wrong. So. Oh, and I also had to get over the, the idea that it's just Chinese spyware, and it probably is. But at this point, uh, you know. Um, Can you share privacy. something? Can you share it with us? One of them or a little bit of it? I, I suppose uh, we go uh, if you want to see it. So. Tick, it's K, it's not C. Talk, T I K. Mine is updating, so. Dot com slash uh, sell more with John. And yeah, which, this is you got a handy one too, like a, um, to fix things or something like that. What was the other one? Oh, oh, uh, it's going to be uh, Full Metal John. That's on YouTube. Oh, I'll okay. post that stuff to American Family too, because people get uh, interesting ideas from that. So, very first video missy don't be the rat <laughs> very first <laughs> video don't be the rat so there you go some more john and then our other one is uh um american family 
And, and you got the, 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 you know, the, the talk along, you don't even have to. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at this. Oh, there the you go. Is. Here's one that I posted yesterday. You guys want to see this? This is fun. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. All right. So it's fun Friday. I got to share my screen with sound, share with sound, Firefox. All right. I have a little time on the patio today. Welcome to the Sunshine State. It is like this every friggin' day. I don't know who called it the Sunshine State, but they were wrong. Wrong. <laughs> and this is one that Shannon just posted an hour ago or whatever. You go now you know what do you think of that <laughs> yeah our chickens are a couple months old now they went from that to that in two months they eat everything do you get to watch where you walk i mean oh no they, they uh we let them out like once a day they walk around the um you know to walk around the, the grass and stuff uh, and to find little, you know, bugs or whatever they get, but they eat everything. So I'll, I'll mow the lawn and I'll throw like a big, you know, a uh, bag of, of grass clippings in there and they rummage through that and they kick shit all over the place. <laughs> and yeah, they're not, they're not tidy. They, you know, just throw stuff everywhere, kicking, scratching. So uh, but a lot of fun. My daughter loves it as well. So, uh, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to have fresh eggs. So come on over you guys, fresh eggs. So much for supply chain issues. I heard eggs went up um, something like 60% or something in the last year. I don't know, something like that, right? Other, other you know, um, food items obviously have gone up as well, but I think eggs were like significant. All right, Catherine, what say you? Uh, I was just going to say that when you were, you said you tossed, were tossing the grass clippings in there. Um, they're supposed to be really good in a compost. If you turn your chickens loose in your compost, and they aerate it because they're digging through, looking for worms and everything. So it's another way you can uh, make your own dirt. I don't have a compost. Maybe that's well, our next. You yeah. need one. Yeah. Well, now I you know. Need one for your chickens to play in. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, we're, we're learning the ways of gardening as well. So um, there's that. All right, my friends. Any other thoughts? No other thoughts? We're thoughtless? Okay, very good. Uh, I'll be back here at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time for Be Heard. If you guys got some stuff you want to talk about, I'll be all ears. In the meantime, go find, discover, demonstrate your truth, okay? The truth is you're, you're awesome. You're very able. Go demonstrate that.